what a weird market. From a transaction standpoint, it's slow, but from a dollar standpoint, it's strong. Did you see the November market report that I just did? October was the best month of the year for single family market. More and more buyers are losing out by sitting on the sidelines. Let's circle back on that one in a second. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to do a quick interest rate update, which, spoiler alert, it was an awesome week for interest rates. And we're also going to talk about some very relevant current events. Hi, I'm Jeff Jum, a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand homes. If you have any questions about the real estate market, then no, I'm here to help. Now, I hear it over and over and over again. It is by far the number one response from people who are thinking about making a move. I'm waiting for rates to go down. This premise is crazy. Okay. If crazy, if you're a first time home buyer, move up buyers, I completely understand is you're locked into that low interest rate. But for first time home buyers, them waiting is only going to cost them a small fortune in the long run. Now, maybe a translation of some people saying that they're waiting for rates to go down is really, I think that home prices are going to tank. Well, I have some bad news for you. It's not going to happen. If prices were going to go down, then this was the year that it was going to happen. Let's say the worst case scenario that next year interest rates stay in the 8 to 9% range. The shock has already been felt. The amount of buyers that leave the market when interest rates go from 8 to 9% is minimal. I said it at this time last year, and I was right, and it's true this year as well. Now, right now, this fall market is the best time to buy. Because if you're waiting for interest rates to go down, then great. Buy the house, lock in the asset price on that house, and refinance when and if interest rates go down a substantial amount. Because otherwise, continue to sit on the sidelines, and as you continue to put money away, know that housing price inflation is going up quicker than you could sock that money away. In other words, for each day you wait, you lose more and more buying power. And by the way, if you're an investor who's looking for off-market houses, then reach out as I'd love to hear where your buy boxes are. We get off-market opportunities each and every day. And I'd love to play a little matchmaking game. And just as a heads up, these off-market opportunities are cash or hard money investments only. No conventional financing is allowed. But now let's jump into the single family market stat. Look at that. Inventory has flattened out and actually decreased a little bit. There are currently 4,719 single family homes on the market in the state of Massachusetts. This is 14 units less than we had on the market last week. This means inventory is up by only 2.9% in the last 28 days. Now, I said last week that I felt that this was going to be the inventory high for the year. I'm thinking this is some evidence that shows I was right about that prediction. Crazy to think that 4,733 units will be the inventory peak for 2023. And now prepare for the start of a rather fast decrease in inventory levels. Because in 2022, inventory decreased by 33% from now until the end of the year, and 2021, it was 47%. There is no doubt that our current market is the best buying opportunity that we've seen in all of 2023. You want the best deal on a house? Then now is the time to buy. With the leveling out of inventory, we saw some conflicting data when comparing it to 2022 and 2021. When we look at the inventory gap for 2023 versus 2022, and we now have 692 fewer houses on the market than the same time last year. Now, this grew slightly from last week, eight units to be exact. But when you compare this year to 2021, then the amount of more inventory on the market actually grew to 548 units this week. This equates to a 38-unit increase. Now, listings had a small jump in the week-over-week -week analysis, but still fell behind last year's numbers. There were 888 single-family houses that came on the market this week. Now, this is compared to the 963 houses that came on the market this week last year. So we were about 75 units off, or 7.8%, off of last year's pace for new listings. Now, the four-week rolling average is 929 units, and as I've said before, we're going to be behind the four-week rolling average for pretty much the rest of the year. So I'm not too worried about that data point. While the amount of new listings was slightly off when compared to last year, the under-agreement data was much weaker. We had 805 homes go under agreement, which was 14.3% less than the same week last year when 939 houses went under agreement. Now, this 14% was an improvement when compared to the 21% difference that we saw last week. But last week is looking to be a bit of an outlier week as the 14.3% is back within that 10 to 15% range that we've pretty much seen for the last now seven out of eight weeks. Now, that four-week rolling average is 857 units, so we were below that four-week rolling average for under agreements as well. So when compared to last year's market, 
New listings were off by 8%, while under agreements were off by 14%. Now, there were 705 single-family houses that closed last week for an average sales price of $757,000 and a median sales price of $605,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were up by 14% as there were 620 single-family homes that closed this week last year. Now, months of inventory. This is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months is considered a seller's market. With the closer that you can get to zero, the stronger and more aggressive of a seller's market that it is. Now, this week, months of inventory actually ticked down a bit to 1.64 months from last week's 1.68 months. The 1.64 months this week is compared to the 1.48 months that we had this week last year. But real quick, here's my shameless plug. You knew it was coming. I just wanted to mention that if you're thinking about buying or selling a home, that it would be a true pleasure to help. Now, onto the condo market. We have 2,625 condos on the market as of Monday. Inventory actually ticked up slightly from last week. It was a 13-unit increase, but an increase was a little surprise here. For all intents and purposes, we can say that inventory has been level for the last three weeks as we've now had 2,621 units on the market and 2,612 units last week and now 2,625. There are 3.9% more condos on the market today than 28 days ago. With that slight inventory build, the inventory gap between 2023 versus 2021 and 2022 continues to tighten. We now have only 159 fewer condos on the market today than at the same time last year. And it's even tighter when you compare it to the 2021 market. We now have only 36 fewer condos on the market than the same time in 2021. And just three weeks ago, that was a 416 unit difference. I'd anticipate that the next week, we're going to have more condo inventory on the market than we did in 2021. But ultimately, I foresee that from this point forward, the inventory gap for the condo market is going to stay pretty consistent between 2021 and 2022. There are 401 condos that came on the market with a four-week rolling average of 415 units. And we can see who was to blame for the small inventory growth in the condo market year over year because the 401 units was 33 more units than 368 units that we were listed this week last year. In other words, we saw a 9% increase in the new condos hitting the market when compared to last year. While new listings came in stronger than last year, under agreements came in weaker. This week, we put 296 condos under agreement, which is 6% below last year's numbers with 315 condos went under agreement. Now, that four-week rolling average is 352 units. So, 9% more listings that came on the market when compared to this week last year while selling 6% fewer condos. There were 337 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $688,000 and that median sales price of $540,000. This week last year, there were 264 condos that sold, so sales levels were up by 28%. Now, months of inventory jumped to 2.26 months from last week's 2.16 months. Any chance you can do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button? Because believe it or not, it just makes a huge difference for me and the channel as it just plays with that YouTube algorithm. You love subscribing. That one doesn't hurt either, so please consider subscribing. Time to talk about interest rates. It was a great week for buyers. We had a little pullback yesterday, but interest rates tumbled last week. Last week, I was talking about how moving sideways was a victory for the interest rate market. This week is what a real victory looks like. I mean, look at that tumble. Essentially, interest rates went from 8% down to 7.5%. So why did this happen? It's a great question. It all centers around the weak numbers from the job report. Payrolls increased by 150,000 in October. This was lower than the forecast of 170,000 and a lot lower than the 297,000 from last week. Now, the unemployment rate also ticked up to 3.9%. So what does this have to do with interest rates? It's because this is the information line that traders work off of. Bad economic news means less inflation. Less inflation means that the Fed won't have to increase short-term funding rates, and might even mean they could start decreasing them. I mean, I think it was a bit of an overreaction. Manufacturing has posted the biggest job loss, and what was going on last week in the manufacturing section? Oh, yes, the big three were shut down with factory strikes. You go to the grocery store today. Let me know if you really think inflation is subsiding, but I do think inflation has some strong headwinds. Do you really believe the economy is as strong as they're telling us? I don't. I have friends whose companies have already said they're not giving bonuses this year. I'm seeing people get laid off left and right. Shoot, I know what's happening in my own circle. More and more agents are leaving the business with established agents just, well, hanging on for dear life. 
you have people starting to make student loan repayments. You got 10 million people that have been removed from the Medicare rolls. The excess liquidity in this marketplace is being sucked up. If you are thinking this economy is strong, well, then give me a call because I got some magic beanstalk seeds to sell you. It's not that strong. 2024 is going to be an interesting year, but in the end, it's an election year. The media is going to continue to peddle a rosy and perfect economy. The Fed will do what they need to do in order to keep this economy moving forward, even if it's at the cost of higher inflation. And the regular folks like ourselves, well, we'll continue to pay the price while the rich men north of Richmond continue to take care of their own. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Whether you're looking to buy in the next 9 or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out more about your real estate goals. And if you're thinking about possibly selling, well, then we can help you traditionally or even offer you a cash offer on your house for a seamless and stress-free sales process. No matter what's your situation, we can help you get it done. Also, should you know of anyone that is thinking about buying or selling a house, then I truly appreciate you passing along my information. You can visit youtuberealestateagent.com and fill in your information, and then we'll reach out to you questions or comments about any of this market data, then drop me a line in the comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so well, I'm always going to take the time to respond to you. Until next time.